Hey there, for this supermarket tour, I decided to do Fortino's in Brampton. Previously, I worked there for four years in the health and natural value section, so I have a pretty good understanding of the products and the layout in the store. Uh, this current Fortino's is the oldest location in Brampton, meaning it's not updated and does not have all the fancy bells and whistles that the newer locations do, such as the Pane Fresco or any of the fresh food bars. Um, but this Fortino's does cater a lot to the specific audiences around it and that will be reflected in this video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at aisle 4 of the OPIRG's supermarket study, which is dry goods, which comprises roughly 10 aisles in Fortino's. Um, it would be a lot of work and it would take a very long video to go through 10 aisles individually looking at all the products, placements. Uh, so specifically, I'm going to be looking at aisle 5 and aisle 3 of Fortino's which are roughly comprised of the pastas, rice, and, um, and aisle three would be uh, baking stuff and spices. Fortino's is typically a more expensive grocery store than others. In Brampton especially, uh, many people choose to shop at other places like Food Basics, No Frills, Walmart, etc because their prices are lower however Fortino's does try to compensate this by saying you are paying for the customer service which in part is true because typically they do have more employees on the floor and available to help assist customers rather than if you go to a place like Sobeys or No Frills there are not as many employees uh, available to assist customers. After reading aisle 4 of the supermarket tour, I was very inspired by the section on corn and soy and the GMOs because when I was working in the natural value section, I got a ton of questions about this type of thing. So I was very excited to go back into the grocery section of the store and look at what products did contain corn and soy and whether or not there was a GMO free products available on the shelf and if they were available on the shelf to what extent was the product available and by that I mean like was there just one GMO free product or did, was there an array of GMO free products and to be honest, I wasn't that surprised because I was aware of the products that Fortino's does carry. Um, so uh, when I went in, I kind of had an open mind, but at the same time, I, I didn't. Um, but it, it was very shocking to see how much or how little Fortino's does offer in variety when they do try to cater to a lot of different people. As discussed in class and in the supermarket tour, we know that companies do pay for advertisement and slots on the shelving. So it's not surprising to see that large sections of the store were, were dedicated to certain items. Um, for example, when I was going through the pasta aisle, there was each section was a different brand of pasta. Whereas in one store they might have all the penne together, or all the fusilli, or all the rigatone together. This uh, Fortino's lays it out as this is all Unico, this is all Del Verte, this is all whatever, right? Because in doing that, people understand that this brand is on sale, or this brand is here, or this brand is here. And typically, the higher quality the brand, or the more popular the brand is, the bigger the shelving space that they will be given. Another issue I wanted to look at when I was going through these shelves was where the alternative products were located. Specifically, I was looking for where gluten-free products were located in the pasta aisle because that is one of the most popular items for people who have celiac or gluten intolerances. I wanted to look for uh, gluten-free products because when I, during my time working there, there was a rise in people who had celiac or gluten intolerances and it quickly became one of the more popular things that people wanted to buy. 
When I was going through the grocery shelves, I was quite shocked to see how little gluten-free options there were. Um, there was the PC Organic products, and there was also a few other brands. I believe Ital Pasta had some. But when I was looking at the shelves, it was surprising to how little product was available for customers to buy. This is not because the product is sold well or because it is flying off the shelves is because head office or whoever does their booking does not order enough because they do not sell enough. I think one of the reasons why they don't sell enough is because of the location that is placed in. All of the gluten-free ob options are placed at the end of the aisle and they're all grouped together, have one or two facings so they don't really stand out. But if we go back to the video and we look at Unico, we can see that Unico has a l large space, they have many different options, and it's very vibrant, easy to pick up. But if you go and look at the PC Organic or any of the other options, you see that they're not very brightly lit, they're not have as many facings, it's just not as pretty to look at. So it's easier to walk by that and it's easier just to ignore it rather than if you see any of the other paths in the aisle, there's lots of space and they look nicer. Another thing I wanted to look at when I was going through Fortinos was the placement of unhealthy products. Now it's no surprise that grocery stores carry unhealthy products, be it things with preservatives, candy, sweets, ice creams, etc. But I wanted to see where they're located in the different aisles and in the past the aisle, the first thing that you see on the left hand side is boxed mashed potatoes, craft dinner, you see those quick and easy hamburger helpers, all the things like that. And it's no surprise that these things are placed there deliberately. Um, they're easy to make, quick, they're for people on the go, and they're horrible for you. So it's really shocking to see something like that as the first thing you walk through an aisle and when you're shopping you're going through you see oh look these sidekicks are on sale for 250 might as well buy one but think about all the preservatives you're putting in your body all the sugars everything that's just not needed in your diet but yet it's 250 and you're quickly shopping through and you see it there you might as well buy it right Continuing into aisle three, I wanted to look at just product placements again, where things were located, and there was a lot of problems that I noticed with this aisle. Um, one of the big things was the uniformity of color, especially in the flower section. Typically when I look at flower and I see yellow and red, I think of Robin Hood um, flower, um, but you would notice a lot of other brands copying this style and it really makes buying flour difficult because you can't really tell the difference between the brands. Um, this is more of a marketing thing rather than Fortino's, but if you place all the things that are yellow and red in the same area, it makes it very hard to distinguish between the brands. And I don't know if this is done deliberately or if this is done just because they're all flour, but either way, it makes shopping for flour in this section very difficult. The last thing I want to talk about in regards to aisle three is the placement of the PC Organic Almond Milk at the bottom of the shelf. To many customers, this would seem like a very foolish move to put it at the bottom of the shelf where nobody can see it and in an aisle which does not have any alternative beverages in it. All the alternative beverages are actually in the second aisle, not the third. So then why is it placed at the bottom of the shelf there? Well, actually I can answer that question. It's because they ran out of shelf space in the next aisle to put it in. So they decided to put it at the bottom of the shelf in aisle three because there was room. This is fine because they needed a place to put it and it is a PC organic product, so it has to go on the shelf. But at the same time, it's in a spot where it's inaccessible to people and most people if they are looking for it they're not going to be able to find it because it's not with the other alternative beverages. Fortino's is just like any other supermarket described in the supermarket tour. It uses the same techniques, it uses product placement, it has things on the shelves that the supermarket tour warns about, 
etc, etc. I don't see any real difference between what is described in the Supermarket Tour than it is done in Fortino's. Uh, other than the fact that Fortino's does have an active health food section that does give um, many alternatives to products that other supermarkets like No Frills might not have. Uh, all in all, Fortino's is a more expensive option. Uh, usually are better with specials, but to shop there full time would be to spend a lot more money than what you would spend typically at a place like Food Basics. After doing this video, it's given me a lot to think about the way I shop in supermarkets and the effect that supermarkets do have on your diet and the way you live. Supermarkets are incredibly convenient and there's one around every corner, but the way they place their products and the way they throw things in your face is very overwhelming when you step back and critically think about it. And it, this whole experience has made me want to rethink and definitely create a shopping list when I go out to grocery stores now to try and avoid all the tricks that supermarkets try to throw at you. Either way, supermarkets do have a lot of benefits in convenience, but they do have a lot of downfalls in the way that they try to push products. So I guess the thing that's best to take from this is to think critically and shop critically when you go to supermarkets like this. Thanks.